The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to the Friday, uh, May 29th, uh, California-Nevada PGA chat. Uh, we're going to throw in subliminally here the SCGA as well uh, in benefit of uh, our uh, Craig Kessler, uh, who will be joining us again once again today, uh, along with an outstanding panel that we usually try to have uh, every Friday. Uh, a lot of things happening, a lot of things changing. Uh, as you know, uh, or at least are aware, uh, golf pretty much is uh, wide open in California uh, as an outdoor activity. And uh, we're very, very happy about that uh, in, in a lot of agencies and many agencies, I should say, uh, uh, retail is opening, food and beverage is opening with the with restrictions, of course, based on uh, uh, distancing as well as uh, uh, sanitary practices and the like. So uh, uh, we're all excited about that, and hopefully we uh, can maintain our responsibility uh, that we do uh, maintain our operations uh, in the uh, in the matter that. Uh, has been approved uh, following the guidelines, whether it's the back to business uh, or whether it's or back to golf, excuse me, uh, or whether it be through the playbook or the guidelines and whatever your local agency has uh, provided for you. Uh, and golf instruction is now allowed in most agencies. Uh, there's still a couple of out there that we have to refine and, uh, and work with those agencies to, um, to finalize that as well as golf cars for the most part uh, are now allowed. Uh, a couple of agencies, a couple of counties uh, still are on the outside in that regard, but working with those as well as you'll hear uh, later on. So uh, we're excited that, um, that things are moving along. As I mentioned, uh, we have a great panel with us today uh, with uh, John Easterbrook uh, from the PJ of America, the chief membership officers, almost a weekly guest, uh, uh, just as well as Craig Kessler and Kevin Fitzgerald. And uh, of course, uh, I'm Tom Addis, Len Dumas, and we also very, very proud uh, to have uh, PGA Golf Professional PGA member, Mike Shy with us from the Northern California mm -hmm. section, uh, golf instructor, golf professional extraordinaire. Uh, so it's nice to have Mike with us as well. Uh, Tyler Miller is in the background producing, um, this program will have Nikki Gatch, the uh, Assistant Executive Director and Chief Operating Officer with us as well, uh, throwing things here and there uh, at us and with us, uh, as well as managing our questions. Uh, we, of course, will have Tony Latendre, uh, the Southern California PGA President, uh, in just a few seconds, and then Dee Moriarty, uh, along with uh, Len, will close out the meeting, and uh, excuse me, the, uh, the webinar, and uh, we hope to have a lot of information, a lot of things still on the docket, a lot of things still changing. Uh, it's still important for us to be engaged and be responsible out there. Um, and uh, the optics, as we talk about every week, are so important to maintain uh, as we go through our everyday business, whether it be uh, golf operations, whether it be food and beverage operations, whatever it might be, golf instruction. Uh, that we're following and maintaining the guidelines that have been put forth, uh, not only uh, that you will find uh, in the back to golf guidelines, but in the local guidelines I mentioned earlier. So uh, without further ado, we have another uh, long program and a, and a nice program for you today. I'd like to introduce uh, the president of the Southern California section, Mr. Tony Latendre. Well, thanks, Tom, and, and thanks everybody for joining us this morning. Uh, nice to see such a large attendance still uh, on this weekly call, uh, looking to gather information. So appreciate y'all being with us. Um, you know, I think we should all say it three times in our in our head that golf is an outdoor activity uh, because that's what keeps us going and that's what's going to keep our our business alive and not get shut down uh, as long as they view us as an outdoor activity. I'm sure Craig will echo that statement many many times as well. Uh, I'm always eager to learn what's new. Uh, it's very difficult here in Southern California to keep track of our eight counties. I think it's eight counties, might be nine counties here in Southern California that uh, uh, everybody has different rules and they seem to be flip-flopping almost uh, daily and weekly. Uh, 
Um, I've even teed up Craig with a couple of questions this morning uh, that I that I don't know if he'll be able to answer just because we don't know <laughs> at this point. But uh, eager to learn as much as I can as always, and and great to be with you all. And uh, thanks, Mike, for joining us and and everybody else as usual. So uh, with that, I will turn it over to I believe Len, and uh, let's let's get this thing going. <clears throat> Okay, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tony, and good morning, everyone. Again, welcome, welcome to, uh, as Tom mentioned, May 29th, and um, the the motion continues. The motion continues with counties continuing filing their attestation with the state to move to the next phase, and some are in phase 2B and uh, already have their applications filed for um, phase three. So the, the the good news, particularly after a Memorial Day weekend and uh, Craig has taught us this, the good news is that there was little news. In other words, there were certainly opportunities for things to go sideways, but there really wasn't in terms of the golf business. I recall a a trail being shut down in Southern California because there were so many people there, but we kept our name out of the paper and and, uh, that is at the moment the right thing to do. So the motion continues again. We thank everyone for being so conscious of the protocols and, and doing everything properly to make sure that we can stay open. And in some cases, uh, and Craig can talk about this in more detail, I believe we've come as an industry to be an example for others that have inquired exactly what we did to get us to this point. So uh, let's continue on with that. And we, as the section offices and and, uh, our partnership with our colleagues in Southern California and Craig and this SCGA will continue to get the information out there as, as efficiently and quickly and as accurately as we can. So uh, thanks to John for being with us and certainly for Mike uh, being back with us. Mike was with us uh, back in uh, 2019 at our player teacher forum. We'll get to him shortly and then of course, Craig. And uh, I'd like to uh, turn it over to uh, John Easterbrook, our chief membership officer. John, again, what you've done with the back to golf with the team is just amazing. And, And the refinements that have come forward and the fact that it's being used pretty much prolifically uh, throughout our state in terms of talking with boards of supervisors and, and talking with health officials has been tremendous. And then, of course, a couple of days ago, we had the launch of phase two of the Gulf Emergency Relief Fund. So, uh, John, your continued uh, advice, input, and guidance, please, and thanks for being with us. Thanks, Len. Um, hey, first and foremost, the elephant in the room is the checklist with the risk acknowledgement. Um, I, I want to tell you, um, I've been on two calls with our medical teams this week. Um, they're inundated. Um, our our lead, Dr. Connor, Brad Connor, um, out of Cornell, uh, is working with Major League Baseball too. Um, I, I, you know, as as Len said, this one of the good things is we're six to eight weeks ahead of other sports. And you know, Tony said this as well as we are an outdoor sport. But guess what we did. We came together eight weeks ago, 10 weeks ago, and worked collectively and collaboratively and showed the world that we were a responsible sport. And so we're well ahead of everybody else. Um, But right now, all these doctors and medical experts um, are inundated. So uh, he sent Jeff and I a note this morning that said he promises he will get this out, uh, the checklist out this afternoon, which has the risk language um, that you all should be pushing out uh, as it relates to um, any events that you're having. Um, and then you you saw the junior league golf uh, addendums that were that 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 are attached as well. So um, you know the 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 call yesterday, uh, it, it was very, very interesting with the, the medical teams. Um, they basically, you know, we're, we're talking about obviously PGA championship in San Francisco. Then you push into the Ryder cup, which as you all have heard from many people, uh, it's different all over the United States. It, it matters where you live. It matters what County you're in. It matters, it matters what city you're in, but what's not going to change in the medical experts eyes is the, is the culture needing to change to facial covering. Oops, John, we've lost um, for, you. You know, as he said, America's going to have. How about now? Are you okay? 
That's better. Yeah, it's better. Thank you. Okay, Ty, and I don't know. I've had trouble with my internet, so I apologize. Um, but where you can't uh, practice social distancing, you need to have a, a facial covering on. And specifically, yesterday we asked the question: you know, if we, if if as the tour, and even if we talk about PGA Championship, if we create a bubble, um, I, and I asked the question, I said, do you see? that the caddy and the player both have to have a mask on and the medical experts would tell you yes. Um, and, I, and, and however, there's a few of them that play golf and they said, but we wouldn't anticipate them hitting a shot. Um, you know, and so they're like, the, just the culture is going to change in the next three to six months in America. That basically says, if you cannot practice social distancing, you're going to need to have a mask on. Um, how that relates to, you know, two people on a golf cart. I'm not sure yet. You know, there's a couple things that, you know, I want to work on in the next two weeks or probably in the next week, because it's going to take two weeks. Is that, a, you know, some sort of model in, in the event, in the uh, facilities that have the physical spacing and the cart availability, I'd like to come up with a modified shotgun that you could, we could put in phase two right now. It's still, you know, as, Many of these folks are are still stating that it has to be tea times only. I'd like to figure out through with some of our great instructors out there, um, you know, how we can eliminate uh, uh, facial coverings at least on on one, if not both, of the the person taking the golf lesson, and giving the golf lesson. If we can come up with ways that they can stay eight to ten feet apart, with the medical experts allow us to to relax that that standard, um, you know, but again, they're not, they're not focused on, you know, us as a, uh, a an essential business. They're, they're continued to focus on us as recreation. So, and then, you know, safety of employees, safety of golfers and sanitation protocol is, um, is what their, their decision making is on. So as people call me and ask me, can you help us get this changed? Um, the, the CDC and the medical experts are, are yeah. slow to change. I know they're issuing something on um, common touch points. It hasn't been pushed out recently, but that will help the industry if they relax some of those um, some of those uh, points that they put out where how long the, the virus can live or if it can live on a surface. So um, the, the continued thing would be um, – Back to golf, as as uh, as Len just said, the document has allowed um, many many um, cities, uh, city operations, county operations to open because there's a document that points to um, our collective nature and collaborative nature, and most importantly, I go back to responsible nature of the way we're trying to treat golf. And, you know, Tony said it: we're an outdoor activity, but. Not only we're we an outdoor act, soccer is an outdoor activity. Little League's an outdoor activity. We're an outdoor activity that, you know, took the initiative to come together and, and put something out, and the world knows that. I mean, back to golf is known by our state legislatures. Uh, the health officials know it. Um, we, I had a story of a, a, a general manager, a PGA general manager in Sarasota, Florida, that came, walked in the, the facility, uh, they basically walked into the three facilities in Sarasota at the same time. And all the, uh, the regional guy was able to point to back to golf and work with, with those people uh, and say, there's a couple tweakings, but because we had this document and because we um, were thinking about it responsibly, they worked with us instead of shutting us down. And those are the stories that we're hearing. And, and one of the things that we heard from uh, the CDC was, and that was this week, if your plans are to scale up. So if you're an operator out there and you're trying to get, you're in the various part of phase one and, you know, maybe the clubhouses are open at X capacity, but, uh, and I mean, we've got disconnects out there where, where there's places that food and beverage is open, but there's still some states that are still not allowing golf carts. So those are the things what you need to work. And so what they said, if your plans, and I'm going to read this because I wrote it down, your plans are to scale up in your communities. Do so with the approval of local health officials. So let's just say you're in a community that, that got the green light to see 50%. And I, 
of uh, your restaurant and your clubhouse can be open, um, you know, and you're not sure about locker rooms. So, you know, use that document to point to, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Local Health Official, I'd like to open up my locker rooms. I'd like to sit two people in a golf cart, um, you know, and get that approval. Um, I think in the next 30 days, we, you, we probably will have two people back in a golf cart, but they'll, it'll be either required or recommended, um, depending upon where you are in the United States, that you have facial coverings. Um, and then again, if you have health officials showing up, point to the responsibility of the document. Uh, point to the collaboration and point to, you know, we're working through this. As Len said, the nice thing is we've stayed out of the news. Um, we've we've had some rebel uh, mavericks out there, but um, we're staying, you know, in the guardrails and golf is busy where it's open. Um, the uh, And then Jeff, Jeff Surratt said something in Phil Philadelphia the other night, and I wrote this down too. He said, you know, if you're, if you're, an operator, just ask yourself if a health official shows up, are you being responsible? So you've got the tools of the back to golf document, and then you've got, you, you can point to and say, hey, we're thinking about this and we're going through the phasing here. You know, we're not just out here, you know, uh, going crazy. We're not the wild, wild west. Uh, we're being responsible and they're working with you. I have not heard anybody that's been shut down <coughs> anywhere in the country that has uh, has referred to the back to golf document. Um, and it is helping, you know, many, and you you all are now, well, the West, Western US in general is well ahead of the East in opening up. So the East is, the document is helping uh, people get opened up. If, again, if you have comments, questions, concerns, you know, get those to Nikki or Tom or Len or me or Scott, um, you know, get them to your section off, you know, officer groups, um, and we'll we'll get them answered. We're 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 probably into um, updating that uh, about every ten days now, and that's just because these folks are trying to open up other sports. The two things, like I said, that I'm working on now are are modified shotguns and lessons, um, you know, to try to to work into the playbook a little bit more. Um, that's kind of it on back to golf. Uh, phase two of the uh, golf emergency relief fund is out. Uh, went live. Um, I would encourage you to hop on today if you need to do um, that, uh, because it's. Uh, I think we had 1,700 folks already in the, um, already apply this morning. So um, it's the the need is still out there, and we're uh, we're having some good. We had the tour, you know, basically donate six hundred thousand uh, dollars from the match last weekend. USGA, Augusta, LPGA, and GCSA or uh, um, C GCSAA um, have all come to the to the table with donations. So um, hopefully, you know, when this is all uh, said and done that we've got, you know, we've pushed out seven to ten million dollars in in relief. So um, uh, we continue. We don't have an announcement yet on the, you know, on anything official on the. Uh, PJ Champ, PJ Champ is, um, you know, still slated, and hopefully everything's a go. And we're in San Francisco, um, probably not with fans, um, but uh, you know, uh, looking good there. Uh, nothing official to say. And then obviously we're working uh, with Sheboygan County and and the government officials in Wisconsin on uh, and the tour and the European tour uh, on the Ryder Cup. So that's. Uh, that's all I got from the HQ standpoint, Len and Tom, um, and I'm happy to answer any questions later uh, if they come up. Um, but uh, glad to be on the call. Glad you all are out operating uh, and just continue to be responsible. And thanks for all you're doing. Uh, John, thank you. And uh, Nikki, any questions? I, I don't see any. Do you, do you have some? Uh, none, none for John specifically, Len. Okay, Nikki, thanks. Hey, John, let, let me ask you again, thank you. Thank you for what you've done personally uh, to get us to this point. But when we talk about shields and golf cars and we talk about, you know, the, the widgets to, um, for the flag sticks to actually, so the ball can actually go in 
go in the liner, but then we use our golf club to pop it back up. Are those elements and other things that are being developed part of the discussions with the health officials? And, and has there been a lot of inquiry of the PGA about, you know, what else is available? Yes. Those, and, and those are certainly problem solvers. Yeah. Yeah. And those are actually, in, those are being put in as the, uh, as the changes to back to golf happen. Um, you know, the flip cups, uh, the, uh, what I call sneeze guard, guards for golf carts um, are, in, are approved um, in the document. Uh, they're approved, but you both people have to ha have a facial covering and the rider has to remain the rider and the driver has to remain the driver. Um, and so those are in the documents now. Um, as the common touch point language changes, um, which we're anticipating it changing. Um, the, uh, you know, the language will be um, removed or changed within the document. So, you know, the, you're right, the flip cups are working. I, don't, I haven't seen anybody come up with a, other than uh, I heard some of the junior programs are actually having the juniors carry their own rakes. Um, right. You know some some sort of rake uh, which isn't you know hey I, I ran junior tournaments 25 years ago i think i would have carried a rake uh, but um as those best practices are out there and and changes apply we'll make sure that um they the back to golf playbooks updated great john thank you and, and we're all working through that you know as our section events start to open up uh in june and certainly that includes our junior tours and such that we have to be cognizant of the protocols for that particular county as well. One and then two uh, are the rules and regulations of the county. Can we mesh them so with the uh, with the event itself that we actually have a golf tournament? You, you, and, you and know, I don't know how many. I don't know how many of you on the phone are. I, I, I'm a golf nut. I can't. I can't play enough golf. I would play golf twice a day if I didn't have a job. Um, but I start my days. <laughs> I start my days at 5 a.m. because all the people I work with are on the East Coast and I'm in Arizona. And so at four o'clock, um, I've been trying to go out and get, plus my head needs to be, but I go out, I've been playing golf uh, at least uh, 11 holes. Um, and it's, there's a reason it's 11 holes, but uh, at five to six days a week. And um, then on the weekends, I'll, I'll play. Um, and but, you know, what's cool about what's happening in golf right now is pace of play, you know, is, is definitely a half hour better. I mean, if not, there's some stories where it's even more, more than that. Um, so it's not taking, you know, time as we all know is one of the challenges and look at who's on your golf course. I mean, it's amazing. It's kids, it's families, it's foursomes of high school and junior high girls. You know, and so we as we as golf professionals, we we got to capitalize on this because we've got a group. And as Tony said, we're, we're educating people how great this, you know, we're showing people and they're coming out and they're um, they're seeing how fun our game is. And the reason we all love the industry that we're in and we got to capitalize on that. I mean, Mike, I took my kids out last night. They're they're all basketball players and they had a blast, you know, and so. Um, you know, good luck out there keeping those, you know, keep all those people, those new people that are showing up, keep them in our game. You know, let's not lose them back to soccer and gymnastics and whatever else is out there. Um, let's, uh, let's try to, let's try to capitalize on the silver lining here. So thanks, Len. Yeah, it's great. Thanks, John. And, and no question, particularly in the area of pace of play, that has been, a, that's been a conversation for quite a while, decades. And, and here we are, a result of something that we certainly had no idea was coming and wouldn't want to do again. But at the same time, in some twisted way, it's helping uh, accomplish some of those goals. So, so that's great. So, John, thank you so much. And I hope you can uh, hang around for the remainder uh, of our chat today. And uh, just a little bit more good news. And we'll go to Mike Shai, uh, looking at the, at the Reno Gazette, uh, that the Washoe County which is in our section, Northern California section, looks like they're headed to phase two of Governor Sisolak's roadmap to recovery uh, in Nevada, which is great news. And I um, believe that the casinos are slated to open uh, next week, about June 4th was the date 
that I've seen. So again, more good news uh, for the game, more good news, a little, probably a little selfishly for us is in the, here in California and Nevada uh, as our two sections work through this. So now I'd like to uh, turn it over to a longtime Northern California section member, Mr. Mike Shai. Uh, Mike is the director of instruction at Dragonfly uh, here in Madera. So it's been nice and toasty in the Central Valley, Mike, I'm sure this past week with 105, 106 degree temperatures. Uh, Mike was a speaker for us at our 2019 Player Teacher Forum uh, in uh, Davis. That's pretty much our annual kickoff and uh, uh, did a wonderful job just having everybody engaged. And uh, Mike, thank you for joining us. And of course, uh, is coach for longtime coach uh, for Bryson DeChambeau. So Mike, what have you been up to? What's happening and, and what preparations are being made you know, with yourself and Bryson as, as we head back to uh, tour events? Thanks for being here, Mike. My pleasure. I'm uh, glad to glad to be a part of this in any way I possibly can. I uh, apologize that Bryson couldn't make it today. He had some conference calls that he had to, to get on this morning. He, he did say he apologized and uh, would have liked to have talked to everybody, um, you know, uh, not to be partial, especially the NorCal guys, being that he's uh, from Northern California. But, uh, uh, you know, he's excited. He's excited that uh, at least the tour is going to be starting on the 11th in, uh, in Texas. Uh, if you follow him online, you certainly have seen that he's uh, put on some weight and uh, hopefully in a good way. He's getting stronger. He wants to uh, obviously hit it farther. He's uh, number one, I believe, on tour right now in distance uh, when, he, uh, when, the, when the tour was stalled. But, uh, uh, you know, the thing about Bryson that, uh, you know, we've always said, make sure you're in the fairway. It's interesting that he's, you know, he's up at all, let's see, 205, 200 mile an hour ball speeds. Uh, I think he wants to be able to sustain that. Uh, but, you know, he knows he can't hit it off the planet, though, doing that. So uh, everything that he's doing is to make sure it's stable and that he can maintain that speed, uh, you know, in, in any condition and uh, be, you know, in the fairway. I mean, he knows that's got to happen and so on. So we're, we're excited about what's going to happen this year. And uh, I know he's excited to, to get back going. I know it's going to be different. That's for sure. No fans. Um, I was talking to uh, Chris Como yesterday. Sorry about my dog in the background there. But anyway, uh, Chris Como yesterday, Chris, a good friend of ours, and he's there in Dallas. And we're talking about how many golf balls they're going to lose because the guys, the caddies and the pros have to look for their own golf ball for the first time. So, uh, you know, it's uh, not going to hit a, you know, somebody in the gallery and bounce kind of back. It potentially could go deep into the trees so uh that's going to be interesting to see that but uh, uh as far as i'm going I, i've been uh shut down for uh, i think i was shut down for six seven weeks our golf course uh, pretty much was open for the most part for the uh we were in madera county and we're uh and adhering to all the rules doing a great job um in in adhering all the rules that you're supposed to do and so we kept golf alive in uh, madera county and so uh i'm real excited about that we I've kind of opened up my academy a little bit for the most part, just outside, teaching outside. Um, it was 107 yesterday, so a bit warm. Uh, but uh, again, I, I love being outside, love being with my students and uh, doing the best I can to keep promoting the game. Great. Nikki, do we have any uh, questions for Mike? No. Yeah, I've got one that came in, Mike, from Andy Tooney. Uh, here in Southern California, does Coach Mike remember playing in the TV team golf championship with Bryson's dad, John? And did he learn anything from John's swing that he applied to Bryson? No. <laughs> uh, um, you know, um, in Bryson, in his journey, you know, we experimented a lot. And I think people don't get that about Bryson. Um, you know, the one thing about his dad and I would fight a little bit about what he was doing, but, you know, Bryson and our conversation when he was growing up, we always said, hey, you're going to try this, but that doesn't mean you're going to play well. And you've got, you've got to allow yourself to fail in order to succeed in the end. And failure might mean somebody you don't like very much beating you. Uh, and so those were rough times and still is for this you know, even today, is that, you know, he still likes trial and error. And so I think, um, you know, the, the hard part about the relationship he had with his dad or has with his dad 
especially in those formative years, is that just like any teenager, you know, he wants to do it his way. And sometimes that wasn't, uh, you know, necessarily what his, uh, what his dad wanted and so on. But we, you know, again, I, his dad was a great player, uh, had lots of uh, things to say. And I, as a teacher and coach and somebody who spent probably 30 hours a week with Bryson, I had to listen um, because, again, it's, it's his dad. And, and so uh, uh, it was a collaborative effort, that's for sure. And, and excited about where Bryson is uh, today. He's very happy with his set up his golf swing where he's at and so that's a good place for bryson he's very confident in that um and so that he can do the things that he wants to do to add to his strength so uh i think that's kind of you know kind of where we're at today great thank you um one other question uh, wondering if you're strictly teaching individual lessons right now or if you've started introducing any group instruction well, you know, I, I really haven't done group instruction for a, a quite a while. I've been more, you know, my view has been coaching. Um, and so even though I might have, you know, 10 kids at my facility uh, at one point or one time, but they're really not together. So there, there could be, you know, one over at the short game area, another one on the putting green, somebody maybe inside uh, doing some video work and so on. and so. Um, you know, most of my kids are there from two to six hours sometimes. You know, Bryson used to be at my place probably six hours a day. Uh, but that doesn't mean he was with, you know, uh, uh, you know, a fellow golfer that whole time. As we all know, you know, golf is an individual sport. So I, I try at this point in time on doing more individual, you know, coaching and instruction. I keep everybody pretty far apart for the most part unless they're family members. Uh, I do have a few that, you know, brother, sister, brothers, you know, and brothers. And so they're together. Uh, but for the most part, everybody's staying, you know, apart uh, for the most part. I, I don't have any plans other than we we talked about maybe doing a junior uh, group instruction in a couple of weeks. Um, but again, I, I still think people, parents are still a little edgy on that. So uh, I, I'm primarily sticking with individual lesson. But again, I still so I really believe in coaching and so for me to, to do a half hour an hour lesson I like people around for a period of time so I can answer their questions great thank you Mike I think that's all the questions we have for now for you so thank you so much yeah. Mike just a little bit as you work with Bryson and I'm sure you know things obvious things come up of course as they do all the time for everybody that you've got some short-term goals and some long-term goals and and what i'm getting at is exactly what happens when you two interact and and you know part of like watching the match this past sunday is players being mic'd more and more in professional sports and that that gives us that opportunity to be there be part of the conversation which is always which is always special and so, and so what happens between the two of you as you discuss short-term goals long-term goals and then things that came up this week that didn't exist next week and that type of thing. So how do you prepare? Well, and you might not like this statement, but you know, what's interesting with Bryson and I, we've never been kind of goal setters. Um, and so it, that's, and we've talked about that before, but it, we always felt like if we set this certain goal or certain parameter that it might, you know, create, you know, some failures that, that he might not recover from or you know, it, that's, and again, it's a long conversation. So, um, you know, things that we've always done, we've probably done this, uh, I mean, there's certain times where he's asked me, what do you think about this? He still does that, um, especially about equipment and so on, um, you know, but my view has always been to try to make him self-sufficient in every way possible. In fact, Bryson will usually say to people and say to me that it's my fault uh, that he turned out the way he did. Um, and so, uh, because I want him to be self-sufficient, I want him to know his golf swing. I want him to know, you know, again, he's got, and I think it's this way out there on tour. You have to own what you do in order you're going to be successful. And so the thing that, that Bryson and I, in our conversations has always done, and we still do it to, to this day, is that what are you going to do? Are you committing to it? And, and then testing it. And then when it fails, now what? 
And uh, there's been times where, you know, I might mention something and, um, you know, I'm glad he held on to the golf club because I think it would have just whizzed right by my head or at me, um, you know. And so uh, I, he tried it, didn't work, or he didn't like what I said or how I said it. But again, that's our interaction and it's helped him. And so, uh, I, you know, I challenge him to test everything possible, which is how we came up with, you know, the one leg clubs, his grips. The golf swing, which again, some people disagree or, or, or agree with, um, but again, he owns it and he knows it. And uh, I, I challenge anybody to challenge him. Good luck with that one, because uh, he'll, he'll, he'll definitely tell you what he believes, that's for sure. And, and again, I think you see that and why he's a top 10 player in the world. I certainly believe he's going to be better than that. I'm, I think he's going to be a number one player in the world. And, uh, but there's a lot of things that have to be done before that, but he's certainly willing to, uh, you know, go the distance because that is his goal. He definitely wants to be the best player in the world. Well, Mike, certainly, you know, I'm sorry, Nikki. Yeah. I was just going to say, we do have a couple more questions whenever you're ready. Yeah, please go right ahead. Uh, Mike, so with the, with, uh, the schedule on tour being so condensed now, um, what is Bryson's schedule looking like? And to take it a step further, what are your plans? You know, do you how how often do you typically go out on tour with him, and and will that be changing? Yeah, that well, that basically changed about a year and a half ago, um, where I only go out a couple of times. Um, you know, again, I, I always viewed myself again as his coach, and as a coach, make sure you put the right people around him. So he has the best chances for success from his caddy, um, you know, whether it's his agent, uh, his manager, uh, putting, you know, sick putters, uh, you know, and so on and so forth to try to put a good team around him. So he has whatever he needs for his success. Um, and, you know, his schedule right now, he's going to do four on four in a row, which is a lot for him week on week off. And then he does six weeks in a row, which should be very intense. So, um, you know, it's going to be interesting, going to be different. I think wearing, um, he has put on some weight. I guarantee you it'll be a lot less by the end of that, you know, schedule. Uh, my plan for sure is to go, or I really want to, is to go to Chicago. Uh, Olympia Fields will be the first time Bryson and I are back together at Olympia Fields where he won the U.S. Uh, Am. And I've been asked to come back by, uh, you know, the, you know, the golf pro at Olympia Fields. And so we're real excited about uh, doing that. I'm hoping I can do that. I hope it's all good that I'll be able to do that. Uh, but right now, take one week at a time and uh, go from there. Great, thank you. And then also a question came in um, with regards to your coaching program specifically. Um, do you charge a monthly fee, an annual fee, pay as you go? Could you maybe explain that a little bit for our professionals on the line? Yeah, I typically charge a monthly fee. Um, I do have players that are from, you know, all the way from Switzerland to, you know, the Bay Area. So everybody is different. I try to, you know, work with everybody's budget the best I possibly can um, and so on. So I've always kind of started with a monthly program and then kind of gone from there based on their abilities and level. I do you know, tend, I do go to tournaments with them every once in a while. I try to do that. I used to do that a lot with Bryson. Um, and so, again, those are all add-ons to, you know, what I do. But, again, I start with a small, uh, you know, monthly fee. I, I kind of based it on some things I saw in the karate world and uh, went from there. Mike, thank you. And uh, have you had conversations with Bryson regarding uh, fans or no fans, spectator, spectator less, you know? His, your feelings about that and his feelings about that, particularly, you know, as a Ryder Cup uh, participant. Yeah, you know, I think all of them feed off, you know, the fans. Uh, um, it's a catch-22 because there's a lot of responsibility that goes with having a lot of fans uh, on property. And so, um, and that that's time. And so uh, that part being kind of eliminated, I'm sure, you know, Bryce and I have talked a little bit that, you know, hey, I'm going to have more time. And so to, you know, whether it's to practice or to get off property quicker or whatever. Um, but again, he's also going, you know, but I, you know, I like people around. I like interacting and, and it, you know, I feed off their excitement and so on. So I think, um, you know, it's, 
until they get in that environment, I think even Bryson has said, until he gets in the environment and how that's going to be, they don't really know. He doesn't know how he's going to truly respond, um, not having people there. So, um, you know, we'll see. I mean, I, again, I, uh, it's, it's sad that people, I, I wish, again, I, I want the crowds there. It's awesome. You know, people are always very supportive of us and Bryson and, and uh, uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I certainly am going to miss that part. Well, Mike, again, thank you. Thank you for taking your time uh, for joining us this morning. I hope you can uh, stay for the uh, rest of our, our uh, chat this morning. And uh, congratulations on your success, or your personal success and your success with Bryce. And, and we'll stay close because we know you're only right down the road. And, uh, and you're such a big part of our Northern California section and also just golf in, in California and the industry. So, Mike, thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure. Anytime. Thanks, Mike. Okay, next up, we'll go to, uh, I think we, I think it's safe enough to proclaim uh, Craig as the voice of golf here in California now, Craig, and, and thank you for keeping us uh, posted on everything that's going on and, uh, and uh, what, what's happening. Uh, our Director of Governmental Affairs from the Southern California Golf Association. Craig, it's all yours. Um, I'm going to, uh, for the first time, at the risk of scaring small children, not be a disembodied head this week. Um, first off, I have some, Jerry Allen's on all of these, in Ventura County is on all of these chats and never fails to post a question, are carts finally allowed in Ventura County? And um, I just got a text, Jerry, that indeed they are. The new rule has not been posted, but I'm informed by a pretty credible source that single rider carts, although it does not have the provision permitting persons from the same household. So even a husband and wife cannot take a double occupancy cart. But for those like Jerry who have labored a long time, Ventura County opened on April 21st, and we've been working that long just to get Ventura County to join the nine other uh, Los, uh, Southern California counties, there are 10 in all, uh, it's easy to forget Imperial, I know, uh, that uh, allow single rider carts. The best way I can answer your question, Lynn, on where we are is, uh, first of all, the good news is that uh, golf made a case on day one, and I paid very close attention to John Easterbrook's remarks because I've been contacted by other recreational communities, tennis and some others, wanting to know what it was uh, that golf understood that perhaps they didn't understand, because in many cases, they're still not back aboard even though there's discussion about dine-in restaurants in some of the places in the state. And the best conclusion I could come to was that there was only two things that put us ahead of those other sports, and John hit, him, hit on both of them. Maximal collaboration, the recognition that we had to work together, and that we had to begin working from day one. It isn't that golf's any smarter than tennis or any of these other outdoor activities. It's just that we, we, were bright, we were wise enough to work together and we were perhaps wise enough to recognize that we needed to be working from day one and not wait six or eight or 10 weeks after the calamity hit and reality struck everybody in the face. So that's the good news of it. The bad news is, is that uh, we got a lot of attention at the dawn of all the changes in the county orders, but because we were first up, uh, but as time moves on, and we're talking about shopping malls, we're talking about dine-in restaurants, and things of infinitely more complication, we're getting lost a little bit in the mix. I mean, that's the best explanation as to why it took all the way until today, May 29th, to get single rider carts in Ventura. It wasn't that there was any particular opposition. It's just that they kept forgetting to include it in the order. And, and or it just, they had 50 things on their plate. And I think we have to keep that in mind as we try to handle some of the small details, whether it's private instruction in Solano County, or as we move to a subject I'll tackle in a couple of minutes, what does this mean for group lessons? We won't use that word, but uh, clinics we'll use instead of that. What does it mean in particular as we get into the summer 
uh, for those ubiquitous junior golf clinics uh, that are put on by the PGA of America and virtually every other, other group uh, throughout the country. Um, so as we move into these moments, so recognize that that's part of our problem. But I want us to take, pay close heed to something else as well. As some counties have opened up, most notably Sonoma, which went a little wide open a couple of weeks ago with a lot because their COVID-19 cases were so low, they sought special dispensation from the state to move to an advanced stage in the reopening process, but they've discovered spikes in their cases and they've pulled back. I strongly suspect that is going to occur. I know it's a great fear in Los Angeles County and in other counties as we move forward. So I know that as we've been on these calls, and we've talked about a great deal of momentum, we get this sense of all positive momentum. Every chat we have, we talk about more and more golf being added, more recreational golf. I, don't, I think we need to get back to the sort of first principles and recognize that what we did collaboratively and so well from day one was break golf into three components. The recreational component, which we made the strong case for, and which we're playing right now. There's the social component as well. And then there's the one that's of interest to a lot of persons on this call, the strictly business component. It's important because we were first out of the gate and because we are going to remain in that gate if we play our cards right, it will only be the recreational component of the game that will keep us there. I know all of us are interested in adding clubhouse functionality, locker room functionality, a spa functionality, and all those things, many of those things are perhaps uh, more, most important to private clubs, but in the public sector in recent years, it's the banquet business that's become one of the great uh, revenue drivers, and that, of course, is pretty much completely shut down. And in our zeal to try to parlay the momentum we've enjoyed into bringing those things back aboard, I've been counseling consistently to allow those things to come back aboard at precisely the same schedule as those things which are paralleled in the private sector. In other words, golf is golf is golf, and the, and the game of golf is only played on golf courses, the recreational component. But weddings and banquets and, and, and restaurants and spas and gyms and all those kinds of things are duplicated in the private sector. I think we need to be content to allow those things to come back aboard consistent with how they come back aboard elsewhere. If we seek special dispensation or go after those things separately, I think we run the risk of conflating the recreation with that and losing that strand and that special, that specialness that allowed us to get out of the gate and back aboard first. Uh, you know, I know I'm, I'm echoing what, what John Easterbrook said, and perhaps he said it a little bit more coherently and eloquently than I just did, but that's why we're back. And as we move forward, whether some of the reopenings that we're engaged in in California begin to duplicate the Sonoma County experience and suddenly the cases go up and we pull back, we don't want the recreational component to get confused with those other components and lumped as something called golf, particularly as we become aware that golf is sort of losing its focus in, in, a, in a sea of all other kinds of businesses and activities uh, moving forward. Otherwise, as we move forward, if there are second spikes in the first wave, we know there's going to be a second wave. Uh, unless this virus is different from every other virus in human history, there will be a second wave. We have no idea. It may be a benign second wave. It may be a tragic second wave. Uh, as was the Spanish flu 100 years ago. We just don't know that. We can pay attention to the results, and that's why every newspaper every day gets a little tiresome. But the reason that they report for everyone all of the cases, all of the emergency room admissions, all of the deaths is precisely because that tells us, that gives us a little bit more information about something that is otherwise completely unknowable. So I would encourage us as we, reach to, as we reach this point to be mindful or take those things as caveats that are extremely important to us as we go forward. Now to the separate issue of group lessons, we'll call it that. Although I've taken 
whether it's uh, advising clubs, public or private, on, I won't say getting around the admonition against group or tournament play, understand that anything which uses a term that can strike a public health officer as bringing persons together uh, is, is an enormous red flag. And that's why so many of the prohibitions and prescriptions that appear in all the golf you know, health order protocols uh, contain prescriptions against anything which has that in it. Tournaments imply spectators, although there aren't a whole lot of those at, at a private club uh, or a public course for that matter. But if you start thinking in terms of things like organized virtual competitions that otherwise look exactly like, um, like play that's just random and per the current rules, that probably becomes acceptable. So put on your thinking caps and, and think back to first principles. And those principles are maximal social distancing and very carefully honed common touch point controls. If whatever you're doing looks, feels, and smells exactly like those mandates, then you're on probably on pretty solid ground. I use that as a springboard because that's a little easier to understand than perhaps those junior clinics, which there's a lot of question now as we move, um, I was going to say towards the end of the school year, but I, I had to censor myself. There is no end of the school year at this particular point. So keep in mind, back to those first principles, um, it's probably permitted in some places, um, but, in, but I, would be very, I would caution everyone to take a close look at separate rules that are being adopted county by county in terms of summer youth camps. Those two things are going to have to be overlaid, the very specific rules about golf and the very specific rules about those. And then you're going to have to use your, again, put on your thinking caps. I know everyone is looking for certainty. Tell me exactly what I need to do and exactly what the rule is. I want to emphasize to everyone that everybody, including public health officials, including our governor, including every board of supervisors, including epidemiologists, uh, and, and, and doctors, we are all blind, absolutely blind in this. Um, we don't know exactly what we're dealing with. And so to, to get certainty about anything is nearly impossible. Because to do that, to regulate all the activities we're talking about in a state of 40 million persons that represents the fifth largest economy in the world, the book would have to be 400,000 pages long and it would be edited in real time, and you still wouldn't know what's in it. Even as they edit, Antonio Lachendra made this comment earlier, early because he's in Orange County, as they've snuck through a few changes and nobody was looking and nobody knows why, and those things are gonna continue to be don't all understand. Um, so I, again, I, I, I've always been, while I applaud the effort to rationalize things and come up with set plans, I, I've always been a little bit intrigued uh, from day one at the uh, penchant for best practices. Because the first thing that struck me was there is no best practice for something that no one's ever done before. Uh, and I would, I would also say that in this regard, remember what I said, the only be the best practice that the golf industry did was recognize that, that we needed to get together and collaborate. That was good. And I think California was ahead of the game. We've been collaborating for a long time in this state. Um, other states maybe are learning a lesson that collaboration pays. But the other thing was we didn't wait to figure out what we were doing before we started doing it. And that may sound a little bit like ready, fire, aim to, to many of you, which is normally not a good way to operate in this world. But when you're dealing with something that amounts to a crisis and nobody has any institutional memory, nobody has any experience, all you really can rely upon is experiences in other things and, and, and experiences and whatever wisdom you've gleaned from, from dealing in situations in which you're flying blind. So I know I, I'm, I get an awful lot of very specific questions and I probably frustrate some of those I answer by instead of telling them this is what you can do and what you can't do, the truth is nobody has any idea. So I end up suggesting this might be your best argument to make to justify what it is you want to do, but make sure as you're doing it that it, used, it always goes back to those first principles 
that underlie all of these rules. They're, those rules are not, are not random. They are means to ends. And, and, and that's all they are. And if you can craft your own unique means to the same ends and justify it, you're probably on good round, ground. And if you always look at whatever you're doing from the viewpoint, if a reporter with a camera showed up or the six o'clock news crew showed up and shot a picture and interviewed a few persons here, would I be proud of what I'm doing would I, or would I be fearful of what I'm doing? Final point I'll make, again, golf industry, golf facilities, those who work in it and the golfers themselves have put on an exemplary performance because there was some reference to a certain hiking trail. It was actually a nature center with hiking trails in the Pasadena foothills uh, called Eaton Canyon Nature Center that got summarily shut down indefinitely. Interestingly, it's just up the road from, from a nine hole golf course owned by the County of Los Angeles called Eaton Canyon Golf Course. Again, the juxtaposition of the two. So those news crews and those cameras had to drive right by that golf course in order to get, in order to get those photos of all those persons jamming the nature center and jamming the hiking trails and hardly, there have been some of them weren't six inches apart and there were a lot of persons that way and they didn't stop to take a picture of the golf course. And I think in my mind, that's a snapshot of what the performance has been. And I simply want to conclude my remarks and I'll answer any questions if there are any by stating that let's keep that snapshot in mind and let's make it so let's keep it in all of our minds because my sense is that we're, we think there's momentum and there's a little bit, but the truth is that we are going to probably be in a, a truncated state of recreational only golf with just a smattering of additions for a long time to come. If you listen carefully to the epidemiologists, and I know there's a lot of positives and everyone's enthusiastic about a vaccine, but the veterans will tell you if there's a vaccine, there's no guarantee. And even if it does come, it could come, it, we, we could get lucky. It could come in six or eight months. It could come in six or eight years. So keep that in mind moving forward to deal with a virus that's very transmissible for now. But uh, in human history, whether it's the Black Plague of the 14th century or, or the smallpox epidemics, these things have a rhythm that it is sometimes, even, even with 2020, hind, you know, you know, 2020 hindsight, are difficult to discern. So keep that in mind. Uh, I hope I wasn't a little bit of a downer in this kind of thing, but I think it's sort of, I think a perspective that we would need to continue acting uh, responsibly and wisely. So far, it's been really an exemplary performance. I know it can be a little bit frustrating because everyone wants to get back to 100% normality. My guess is the world has permanently changed and the golf industry has probably permanently changed um, in ways that we won't understand for years to come. But I'm going to echo something that John Easterbrook also said. This is also an op there's also great opportunity in there because there's great virtue, great value in the golf industry having repositioned itself in the public mind as something that's entirely recreational, as something that's been around for 500 years in lots of places, now an international game, that's made it through wars and revolutions and, uh, and you know, mini ice ages and slight climate warming, and yet it continues to bounce back. Because one of the things that we should all find most gratifying and for a lot of reasons, I track municipal numbers very carefully because I think they're the leading edge of, of the health of the golf industry. But the truth is, even with a very extended T intervals, for example, the city of Los Angeles is still using 12 minute T intervals on their systems. And they discovered a funny thing. Uh, they ran an experiment and discovered that they have more play with that 12 minute interval in, in May of 2020 than they had in May of 2019 using a lesser interval. So there are some positive things in terms of pace of play at the busiest municipal systems in the United States. We just ran an experiment that everyone was afraid to run and discovered, I don't know, the honeymoon will be over and there may not be a value in a 12 minute T interval, but we discovered some things about that, you know, by, by being forced to run this experiment of positive value. We discovered some enduring values that this, this strength that this game has being an outdoor activity. And keep in mind, for some time to come, 
golf has to compete with other activities that are recreational and require discretionary income, their leisure activities. Many of those, including sports, are, are not going to come back in the same way. So even though the dollars are going to be diminished by an economy that's going to be struggling for at least a couple of years, um, there's something to be said about getting a greater percentage of the fewer dollars available. Golf has that opportunity, and it has an opportunity to demonstrate things, some things about its, its virtues and values of an enduring nature uh, that were tough to do four months ago. So yes, there are going to be a lot of problems. All of our functionality is not going to be fully back for a period of time. And the economy is definitely going to be in a spin as, per, as persons don't have the discretionary income. However, if we focus on just those things, we'll be making a huge mistake. We need to focus on those things that have arisen out of this that, that we should grab onto and grab onto hard and run with because that may enable us to, to become stabilized through this. And then when we do get to the other side of a bad economy and we do get to the other side of this pandemic, we may have repositioned ourselves for a growth that otherwise, but for this pandemic, we would never have enjoyed. So I brought you a little down maybe, and then I hope I lifted this up a little bit uh, because out of crisis, there's also opportunity. So let's focus on that. And, um, and uh, if there are any questions, uh, Len, Tom, Nikki, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Greg, I think we're, we're clear on the questions right now, and, and thank you. You know, even as we had a, a call this morning that, that we were on, the, the, you know, the theme was stay the course, stay the course, stay the course. And we've done that, and a lot of that has come from your advice, and now we have, you know, a, a one full state and part of another state, California and Nevada, moving at tremendously different speeds and different paces. And as you say, trying to keep up with them is a task, but so far it's working. So we've been, you know, our, our new industry phrase, I guess, is be responsible. Uh, so kudos to everybody for doing that. And Craig, I, I don't know if it's a downer as much as some of that caution has led us to some of the successes we're having now. And uh, so far, so good. So we'll continue on that path. Uh, thank you, Craig. And uh, I'd like to now uh, turn it over to a career consultant, uh, Karen Farrell. Ken's been a member of the Southern California PGA for a long time. And I don't mind saying recently inducted into their Hall of Fame and taking care of Southern California and Aloha. So Ken, please join us. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Lynn. Um, and good morning, everyone. Uh, just a couple of things that I wanted to talk about. The first thing is how much I appreciate these PGA chats and especially those that are providing information because Carol and I's job is to um, take that information and share that with members so we can help them uh, with their careers and, and uh, of course that carries over their personal lives as well. Um, so this information has been incredibly helpful um, and we appreciate everybody that's contributed to them. Uh, a couple of notes, um, uh, members and associates, I know you've been inundated with uh, uh, emails and uh, especially probably from Carol and I uh, on a couple of things. We've, we've had a lot of changes within our department and uh, they carry over to you, but keep in mind that each of those changes are for your benefit um, with career services and employment opportunities, those kind of things. So um, one of the uh, things that you've received uh, from Carol and I, in fact, 1,700 people in Southern California, uh, is uh, that CareerLinks is going away and that all jobs, management and non-management positions are gonna be posted on the job board. There's several reasons for this. One, the fact that you can see all jobs now that are posted, um, but the profile um, option does not go away. So one of the uh, emails that you've received from us is if you would reach out, log in to pga.org and then complete your profile. The good news is it's only five questions which are very quick and uh, once you do that, jobs that match your profile based upon your answers and the questions um, will be in your account to uh, review. Once you complete those five questions, 
there is not a save or submit button. Once you log out, it gets saved automatically. So please know that as well. Um, on the uh, specialized program in Southern California, 110 people took advantage or taking advantage of the specialized program, which the PGA um, made the library available at no cost. Keep in mind that that continues until June 30th. So uh, Carol has done the same up in Northern California. I just reached out to those 110 people uh, personally to ask them uh, about what areas they've chosen, uh, what issues they may be having and assisting them through that and then uh, also their enjoyment of the program and and uh, it's a wonderful opportunity um, so if you do have any issues or any challenges uh, please reach out to me or reach out to carol so that we can help you through those um, the third thing is and i get this question quite a bit uh, emma if i'm offered to come back to work do i have to go and uh, Craig, if I say anything that's incorrect uh, that you know, please uh, remind me. But the reason that some people don't want to go back to work is they may be making more money on unemployment. I know in my son's case, he made twice as much as he did at his uh, current position. And so, um, so he got the call to go back to work at the Hilton and he put on his name tag and and he's doing it so uh so the answer is yes as long as your employer is providing a safe environment and safe environment of course you know could be shields could be uh, sanitation and cleaning that they're doing a lot of facilities are doing that every 30 minutes um of course social distancing um and those kinds of things however if you have an health, health issue and you don't feel that it's safe to go back to work, uh, that's a different story. So, and then finally, um, we're uh, working uh, with a lot of members that are going through uh, interviews for new positions that are available. Keep in mind that those interviews now are probably all taking place on video, which is a little bit different than uh, face to face. And there's a lot of different tips that Carol and I can offer you uh, doing video, video interviews uh, versus face-to-face -face interviews. So please uh, know that we're here for you. Please reach out if you have any questions uh, about anything. We'll direct you to the right area if uh, um, it's not something that we can answer. So uh, thanks for uh, putting up, I guess, with all of our emails and our phone calls, but uh, we're here to serve you. Uh, Len and uh, Tom, I'll send it back to you and answer any questions if I can. Thank you, Ken. Thank, thank you uh, so much for the information. And I did do the survey this morning, so I, I will confirm that it, it doesn't take very long at all. And I appreciate the opportunity to do that. Uh, so Ken, can you confirm, make sure we've got this right? I believe that the library, well, we know the library goes through June 30, but if you're at the point of just submitting the capstone paper uh, as, as the only thing remaining, that there's another 30 days to do that, is, is that correct? That's that's correct. That's uh, uh, to my knowledge, that's correct. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, thank you, Ken, and thank you, Carol, for everything that you do and keeping everybody uh, uh, grounded and informed uh, as we go through COVID nineteen. Uh, I'd like to turn it back now to uh, my counterpart, the executive director of the Southern California PJ and also past president of the PJ of America, Mr. Tom Addis. Tom. Yeah, thanks, Len, and, and uh, get right back to you. But just wanted to mention a couple of things and on, on the screen for those of you who are uh, viewing the webinar, uh, you see the phone numbers and the contact information. And we'd just like to encourage you to, to call us. Uh, I appreciate the number of calls that um, uh, I've been receiving. Uh, I hate to use the word I, but, but that's the only way in this case. Uh, and in some cases, someone says, hey, I'm sorry to call you. I'm sorry to bother you. Hey, this is, this is what we do, and there's no bother. Um, these calls and these questions are so important, uh, just like this webinar is so important uh, for the 130 to 140 to 150 of you who have taken the time to do this. So uh, keep calling us because there are changes. Uh, we're in contact with Craig Kessler. Uh, uh, almost every minute of the day, it seems like, uh, whether he likes it or not, and uh, and Kevin Fitzgerald, 
And so please keep calling. We're, we're here to help uh, and to guide and, and to represent you out there as well. Um, just like as everyone else has said, uh, this is up to us and we need to take uh, care as to what we do at our golf facilities and golf courses. And we continue to use this word responsible because that's what we are. Uh, and we've been very, very lucky uh, that we've been able to do what we do, as Craig has said over and over again, uh, that we've been at the forefront uh, of an outdoor activity and setting the example. Uh, and if we continue to do that, that'll keep us on the forefront or in the forefront. Uh, and we continue to set that great example that we've been doing uh, and golf continuing to be the leader that we all know uh, that we are uh in the world of athletics and the world of uh, of uh, uh out activities so thank you all for that and and thank you all for taking this as you have uh it's really important and we appreciate it uh and we appreciate it every day um, before i turn it back to len i'd just like to say thanks to tyler and nikki and and of course len and then mike um john easterbrook again and then of course uh craig and and uh uh, uh, for whatever we, what everyone has done, Ken and Carol, for your help. Uh, one more thing, uh, it looks like we may be talking about the new social distancing to be up to eight feet. So kind of pay attention to that and, and be looking around for that. Uh, that has been the conversation. Uh, I know it was last night on CNN. Uh, I do watch CNN uh, and some of the other news uh, uh, news companies. So. Uh, pay attention to those things. Pay, as Ken said, pay attention to the guidelines. Again, be responsible. Thank you for everything. Uh, Len, thanks, and uh, appreciate your time, uh, and we'll see you all next week. Yeah, thanks, Tom. Thank you. So, so many things going on at one time, and, and um, again, you know, between our two sections, we represent a little bit more than plus or minus 10% of the membership of the PGA of America, so it's actually been uh, an absolute honor to be able to to do this together. Um, I'm going to go a little uh, to Carol. Carol, please join us. Career consultant for the Northern California PGA and longtime member uh, of the section, Carol Pence. Carol? In my chats with section members uh, back at their clubs, um, it seems a common theme is a crazy number of hours they're working. Most everybody jumped right into what seems the height of the season. And I just want to remind everybody to take good care of yourself, do what you can to avoid burnout. Uh, remember to turn off your laptop, your iPhone, and get off the property when you can. Switch everything off, venture home, spend more time with your family. Um, be safe and be responsible to all those around you. Uh, as Ken mentioned, if he or I could be of any assistance to you, feel free to reach out. If we can't assist you, we'll find somebody who can. But um, we're here to help you in any way. And uh, back to you, Len. Thanks again. Okay, thank you, Carol. Thanks for being with us. And now let's go to uh, not only our correspondent who lives just a couple of blocks away from Harding Park for the update on what's happening there, but also the president of Northern California. PGA section, Didi Moriarty. Didi, good morning. Hey, good morning, Len. Good morning, Tom. Uh, really a lot of great information today. Mike, it was great to see you on the screen. Hope you're doing well. And I, I don't really have too much to add, just echo everybody's thoughts. And it's really uh, great to see a lot of things starting to happen. And we're doing our job to keep golf in a good light. Uh, you know, just a little update from San Francisco. Mayor Breed laid out a bloop blueprint for the next phases of opening up and I thought a couple things were interesting that she uh, indefinitely uh, extended the shelter in place uh, even as we're starting to open up in the different phrases uh, some different types of retail and, and other things so um, and also that uh, the mask uh, rule got more stringent that uh, if you're within 30 feet of somebody even while you're exercising you have to keep your mask on uh, so I think that will change the golf landscape um, a little bit if we follow that. And so the message here is is pretty clear. Just uh, keep doing what we're doing to keep flattening the curve and keep the city open. You know, on a fun note, uh, kind of to echo John Easterbrook, 
you know, kids uh, that we teach and that I teach who are maybe golf wasn't their primary sport and they can't do their sport and they're, you know, their parents are sending pictures and videos of their kids playing golf and just being just how happy the kids are to play. So uh, I think golf will prosper. We'll keep doing the right things and, you know, everybody stay safe and uh, wish I could see you all, but another time. So throwing it back to Len. Okay. Thank you, Didi. And, you know, good things are happening. Certainly the match this past Sunday uh, was a big hit. It was great to see. It was great to see uh, the players out there, Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and Phil and Tiger. It was fun. One of the things about it was fun. And we got to hear some of their uh, inside conversations. We're heading to a tour event, right? Colonial is only about two weeks away. So we're excited uh, for that to start. And uh, we're certainly hoping against hope to have some more details uh, about the PGA uh, and Harding Park, some of the finalizations uh, next week. Next week, as we get about 60 days away, uh, that Monday is August 3rd, and the first round would be August 6th. So we'll keep everybody up to speed as soon as we find out, because uh, we do have some work to do there, which is great. And one of, one of the uh, things we've been talking about is how long to keep the chats going. And and uh, as you know, we've gone from two two a week to one a week, and that's got to do with everybody being back to work, which is awesome. And uh, our plan at this time is to keep going, particularly at, here we are on a Friday, and we still have over 130 people attending the chat. So thank you all for that. And as Tom mentioned, uh, the feedback, the calls, the, the messages uh, are, are really welcome and keeps us in touch and lets us know uh, that we're doing the right thing. And as these new requirements come down, more and more counties uh, asking that masks be warned when you enter a public place, maybe it's a Costco, maybe it's Raleigh's Safeway, whatever it might be, uh, locally to adhere to that. And as Tom mentioned, uh, the possibility of going to eight feet social distancing. So uh, we, we'd rather have those adjustments than a shutdown, I'm sure. But I think, again, it's a great sign of everybody being so diligent about being so serious about the success of all of us uh, as an industry and, of course, individually. So for this morning, thanks, uh, John Easterbrook, our Chief Membership Officer, PGA, HQ. Thank you, John. Mike, uh, really great to see you again. Uh, again, congratulations and good luck for everything that you're doing personally and with Bryson and Craig. Uh, Craig, you, you know, you're taking us through these times, taking us through these times, good news and bad news, but news that's accurate and good news that we, that we need to hear. Thank you, Tom, Nikki, Tyler, um, Tony. Dee Dee and Caitlin for uh, keeping us going. And with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, again, please be safe. Please be responsible. Uh, as Dee Dee said, let's have some fun. Let's enjoy being out there. Let's enjoy the greatest game of all. And we we'll look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Thanks, everybody.